uh, tech up. He knows that. I'm going to get Dryads, and if I get Dryads and he's still at Tier 1 Ghouls, he's going to lose for sure. There he goes. He goes and creeps that. Uh, he gets a Red Drake, which isn't too bad of an item. It's not that great, not that bad. But a lot less item, good items dropped from these guys because the ank is removed and the potion rejuvenation isn't as insanely powerful as it used to be. So those ones are, are pretty uh, pretty uh, good creeps still, but they're not as great as they used to be. They're not game enters like before. But right here I realized i got to push him. I actually thought he was teching much faster. That's why I went and I scouted him here. I thought he was going to be on his way to tier 3. I didn't realize he built that many ghouls and really slowed himself that badly. And really he should have upgraded a lot more too. Uh, but he really messed up on that one. So, that was his mistake, and, and I'm going to try to take advantage of that, and I'm going to do that by pushing. I realize he's not building Crypt Beans, he does not have Carrion Swarm, he does not have a Nova. He is the perfect push candidate, and, and that's where my old school strategy that still works, that I designed, you know, what, over a year ago I designed that strategy, and it's still working, so it's kind of nice for me. This Red Drake's real annoying right here, because it's going to kill off a few of my weaker units, and, and that didn't make me very happy. got my Dryad there, and I don't have a Bosch yet, so. Certain situations, Dryad's going to be extremely useful. That's going to get this one there another unit there. I realize that he's moving along there. So I grab the item and I got a buggy because I know if he gets me to sleep, I'm really going to hurt him. I mean, look at this stuff. He's got two potions of mana, two potions of healing, and a, and a potion of scroll of healing. So that's really going to hurt there. I detonate him there try to get a little bit less off. But I realize I'm in a fight for my life here. I got about six units. They're all wounded. And I realize that this Ancient of War is going to be key. I mean, a lot of people are underestimating Ancient of War. Yes, they're not as powerful. Yes, they're still very powerful. You'll see how pivotal this Ancient of War is in this battle because of how it positions my Ballista Blasts and how it makes my Ballista Pass so powerful. My Ballista Blasts are hitting every single one of his ghouls, and that counters his scroll healing. And you see I got two Ballistas, I got some very weak hunts, and I blew my position. Here he goes. He immediately goes for it. Boom. I knew he would go for that by uprooting it, and I immediately start blasting away on his ghouls. I take out... Almost three ghouls before he gets this Ancient of War. Uh, you see, I made him use his scroll healing right there. I made him use his scroll healing so he didn't lose two ghouls. I mean, gee, that's so beneficial to me. And here we go. This is the counter. He goes to surround me, use a couple potions of healing. He's getting absolutely reamed. And that's why I'm making a bad choice. I baited him. It's not like I got lucky there that he went after my Ancient of War. I put it in a position where I tricked him into thinking that was the right call. And that's just how it works. It's all about deception. It's all about psychology. I mean, after you get past the microing and the building and the, and the learning the timings and all that stuff, which will get you about level 25, the difference between level 30s and, and the best in the world is not, is not like how well they micro. I mean, some, yes, they do probably micro better, but that's not it. I've seen guys that, are, that micro far better than me, but that cannot beat me because I tricked them so badly into doing things that are just so stupid, and they don't even realize that they're doing something that dumb. And right here, he's done. I mean, he's got nothing. Look at look at what his bread lord's got. His bread lord's got two potions of healing, two potions of healing, and two potions of mana. That doesn't help him. I mean, how how is that going to help him at all? I just destroyed his force by using a 170 gold ancient ore I didn't even need to to deal with that. And right here, I realize I, mean, I better get some potions because I know he's going to sleep me. I know he's going to surround me. And that's what he's working on right now. He's working on his uh, death knight. I mean, right now he's not that slow. We're just now in the second night, so normally my push is done by the first day, so I'm a little bit behind, maybe like uh, five minutes behind or so, four minutes behind, but this game's still done at a pretty fast pace for how much has gone down. We're only at the 13-minute mark, and you know we've completely abolished some, completely destroyed some forces, and right here, he runs right into me. I realize that uh, this Death Knight, I cannot focus fire on this Death Knight. I realize that would be a big mistake, because, watch, I entangle it, and he sends his force in. If I focus fire on this Death Knight, I would have lost a lot right there. I may have gotten the Death Knight, but I would have lost a lot. And this is where he makes another mistake. Goes after my Demon Hunter. I put some potions on him. And watch how much he loses here. Because the Ballistas are just pulverizing with the Emulate. The Ballistas and the Emulate are ridiculously pulverizing him. And then he's going to lose... He's gonna, his Dread Knight's going to take a... Dread Lord's going to take a beating right here. And those are the choices. I slept him. And yes, he went after my guy. See, the thing is, though, I didn't even care. A lot of people might have tried to get the guy out of there. I, I, I knew that's exactly what he was going to do. I knew that he was going to do, and I prepared a counter for it. I got some potions, you know? And those are, those are what wins and loses games, those kind of decisions. you really got to make those decisions, and, and, and you got to know it's the right decision. You can't just say, well, I hope this works. I hope he does this. you got to watch what he does. A lot of the things that you can do when you scout is not to scout to see what he's tech can do. In this game, it doesn't really matter what units they're using. What really matters 
is how they play, learning their styles, learning what they do, picking up what they like to do, how they like to position their units. I mean, those things are crucial in beating people. I mean, I learned from the very first part that this guy was a total hero assassin. This guy wins games off assassinating heroes. That's all he knows how to do is undead. If I take away his ability to assassinate my heroes, he is going to lose very badly. I mean, here he goes. Look at how he fought this battle. He did not focus fire his ghouls on any of my units. He just sent them in, and I just cycled units out. That is the worst thing he could have done in that situation. And because of it, he lost badly. And there he goes. I mean, his plan, his game plan was to go into my base and basically assassinate my heroes, but I gave him an opportunity he couldn't give up, blowing up a free ancient war. And he thought it was free. But those ballistas were doing a lot more damage than he thought they were. And right here, this is the end of the game. Basically, I didn't say good game to the guy because I was watching TV. And he got pissed off at me and decided that he was going to go hide the farm. I mean, a lot of guys do this. I think that level 30s should be past the stage of the level 12 at hide the farm, but whatever. You know, if people want to be lamers, they, that's their call. So anyways, nothing really happens to this. Just some more tips. I mean, really what I'm trying to focus back, is, since I got back, is... I mean, a lot of people can teach you strategy, build orders, whatever. I mean, that stuff does not matter as much as making the right decisions. And teaching someone to make the right decision is hard to do in a commentary. I can show you the right decision, but you still have to go into a game and think about it and be like, and you have to analyze stuff. You know, you can't just be like, you can't just watch my replays and be like, wow, that's what I should do. I should always do that. I should always do that. It doesn't work that way. Each game's different. And that's what a lot of the people that don't talk, that don't talk about strategy, they don't talk to you. They don't teach you about those kind of things. And those are the most important things, is analyzing each game. And a lot of that stuff you can learn from experience, but a lot of it you can learn from other games. You can watch that by learning by commentaries and, and other people's commentaries. You still have to apply it. And... I mean, to do that, you really have to think about what you're doing. You just can't mindlessly do things. You can't hope, if I build these three units and I charge, I'll win every time. That's not a true strategy game. A true strategy game is there is no unbeatable strategy. There's always a counter. You can always do things to win. And that's why I get angry at Warcraft 3. And that's why I think that Warcraft 3 is kind of a, kind of a bad game in certain ways that a lot of the imbalances don't promote things like that. And that's what really frustrates me with the game. And, and that's why I complain about the imbalances a lot because there should be no unbeatable strategy. You should always have options. And that's where I'm going with that. So these two commentaries were kind of about how to make choices, how to make the right decision, trying to show people that a different aspect of the strategy game, which a lot of people don't really talk about, but is very prevalent in the highest areas of play. And my next two will kind of be more based off strategy, more based off what to do for uh, certain races. I think it will be night off for human uh, matchups, since uh, that's a very prevalent one. I mean, this guy was like one of the third undead players I've played. I've only played three night off for undead games on Europe so far. I've played about 15 like human guys. That's like, like a majority of my games were human guys, so I mean that's like the biggest matchup these days. Is everyone's picking Night Elf for human. I haven't even really played that many Night Elfers, Night Elf games, but Night Elfers, Night Elf is an archer war. It's as simple as that. It's whoever controls their archers better, whoever gets out there with the items. You get a wand of lightning shield, Night Elfers, Night Elf, you're gonna win the game in my opinion. Anyway, so that's that's this. This is over, and I hope you enjoy this, and I'll have another couple coming for you. Okay, this is the last lot of commentary. Fourth one, another night off for human on no wood. Uh, this is actually a map that started to scare me because I thought he could so easily creep the grass. I was kind of fearful what he was going to be doing. But I also knew he was going to try to fast expand. Uh, no wood's a map that is very, very dangerous to fast expand on, but very, very rewarding if you can get it off. I mean, you get a lot of XP from taking those creeps out, and I mean, it's, it's just so beneficial. So right